<clears throat> G'day guys, Mick here. This one's gonna be a little bit off the four-wheel drive topic. Um, this one's for anybody looking to buy their first car. Be it their first car ever, or their first four-wheel drive, um, their first ute, their first sports car, whatever it might be. When just in general looking to buy a car, I guess. Um, being that I like the four-wheel driving, I see a lot of people talking about uh, buying a four-wheel drive and I've just done a video on that. So I'll link that in the description down below. Um, but yeah, this video I want to be, in general, looking to buy, your, buy a car. I see a lot of people, in particular with the four-wheel drive scene, but then also in the, at the same time, um, just in day-to-day, -day, be it young guys, older people, families, whatever, buying cars that really aren't suitable for them. Now, I haven't had my license all that long, I'll admit that. I only got my license in 2012, so currently it's been about eight years. But in that time, I've owned a number of different vehicles. My wife's owned a few. Um, we've had a couple that haven't been overly suitable for some purposes, but have been more suitable for others. So I want to talk about what I look for when I'm going to buy a car, whether it be um, my car or for my wife or whatever it might be, what I look for when I'm looking at a car. The first thing I want to look at, in my opinion, for looking for a car is I've got to remember that I've got a family. Right, I've got my wife and my son. We often take kids around, to, like our nieces and nephews and that around with us as well. So I need a vehicle that's capable of carrying more than just two. So single cab utes are out for me. Um, however, when I had a, my lawn mowing business, I, I ran a mowing business for five years. When I had that, I had a single cab, rear wheel drive 2000 model Hilux. And that thing was a weapon, I loved it. But on a family note, it was useless. Work vehicle, it was brilliant. And that's where it fitted its need. It needed me and a worker in the vehicle. It didn't need the whole family in there. And we had our own family car as well. My first car was a 97 model EL Falcon. Um, I purchased that because I've always been biased to Ford, I'll admit that. But I purchased that because it was a family car. It was a larger vehicle, it was rear wheel drive. I don't like front wheel drive vehicles in general. Um, so it was a family car, it was a larger vehicle, it was rear wheel drive. It had a good sized boot so I could put luggage in there when we go away camping and um, visiting family. At the time I was living in Sydney, so coming up here to the coast to see family. Um, or even now going back down to Sydney to see family. You know, we had the luggage space there. It was comfortable, it rode nice. Fuel economy wasn't too bad. Um, and it was capable of towing a decent weight. So these are things that I looked at before buying the vehicle. Be it Ford, Holden, whatever brand it might have been, that would have, they were the things that I was looking for. Was something that I could fit the family and be comfortable with, carry luggage and tow were my main things. Um, and we ended up having three of those Falcons. I had two and my missus has had one. Unfortunately, one of them got wrecked. One of mine got wrecked. Um, then the missus had a Commodore Ute. It's only a single cab. It was a little bit better for the family in the sense that it was wider than what the Hilux was. And it wasn't a manual, so I wasn't trying to reach down between my son's legs to change gears, which I really didn't like that in the Hilux. So we had a bit more room and it was more comfortable. Um, it was actually automatic on the tree. So that was a good thing for us. Um, the Commodore unfortunately needed a lot of repairs and we ended up getting rid of that passing that on and buying another Falcon. Um, after I was made to sell the business, obviously the Hilux Ute went with that. 
no, that started becoming a bit of a camping vehicle for me as well because I could carry all my camping gear in there and it was light on fuel and got me around nicely. So I started getting into my camping and that while I had the Hilux and while we had the Falcon. So as I was saying, the business got sold, the Hilux had to go, so I started looking for something else. I thought to myself, well, I want something I can take camping, that I can get out to fishing spots with, and that I can sort of enjoy and still be comfortable to take my family around with. So I started looking at four-wheel drive wagons. I looked at patrols, land cruisers, um, jackaroos, and eventually the Pajero. And I found nothing wrong with any of them. Price brackets and the ones that I looked at, the Pajero turned out to be the better bang for buck. Um, it's got plenty of storage space. It's got seven seats if I really need it. It's got four-wheel drive, proper four-wheel drive, not just all. Um, and it can get me everywhere I wanted to go. One thing that was for me is that I prefer petrol over diesel. I always have preferred a petrol motor over diesel. I don't like the noisy diesels, especially. I like a nice, quiet, smooth ride. So I test drove the Pajero and it was amazing. I fell in love with it on the test drive and it came home with me. So every vehicle I've looked at has faced a, faced a bit of scrutiny into what I want to do with it and what it's suitable for. And it's, it's always been purchased to fulfill a need, so to speak. Not a need of, oh, I need to show off and show people I've got a big dick but I need that I need to support my family and take my family around, and I want to do these things as well. Um, a lot of people bag out the Pajero because of the name and what it supposedly means in Spanish. Yes, okay, it means person, person who pleasures himself, who gives a shit. Um, but, and a lot of people say that the Pajero is not a real four-wheel drive because it's independent, especially this one is all round. Uh, the Gen 3s and 4s are independent suspension all round. But look, they drive beautiful, they handle great. And it really does fit my needs. I've got five seats in here, which is all I need most of the time. And if I need to take an extra kid or two around, I can take the stuff out of their back and I can put seven seats in. <coughs> Where's my... Um, so yeah, when it comes to looking for a car, no matter what type of car you're looking for, The few things I think everybody should stop and look at is what you need the car for. Do you need it to get you around to and from work Monday to Friday? Do you need to carry a family? Do you need to carry loads? Do you need to tow? Do you need to get into more remote places? You know, if, if it's just you and a couple of mates, you know, two or a four-seater, a little sports car, whatever, you know, that's fine to get you out and do what you got to do. Um... If you need to carry a family, and especially if you're gonna be doing longer trips, something a bit more comfortable, so something more suited to a family car, a larger vehicle. Um, do you like front or rear wheel drive or four wheel drive? All wheel drive even, with the Subarus and things like that. Um, so stop and have a look at really what what you want to do don't just turn around and go oh that car looks cool it's got a good name or whatever like oh yeah that's a friggin subaru wrx i'm gonna buy that because well it's a cool car but it's not practical for you um so yeah really sit down and think about what you're buying what you're going to use it for day to day um and what sort of things you need i do you want to travel in it do you need the extra storage space, the luggage space and that in the boot or a wagon? Um, do you want to go off-road a bit? Do you want to go bush? A lot of the places I go, you can still get sedans into and wagons or vans, things like that. Um, so, to buy, to buy a four-wheel drive, like, yes, I've purchased mine and I love mine and I swear by it. And it gets me everywhere I want it to go, plus some. Um, but in actual fact, no, maybe I don't necessarily need it. I could probably get a Falcon wagon or a Commodore wagon, and that'd probably get me everywhere I need. Um, 
would I buy a dual cab? Be it four wheel drive or not. I don't mind dual cabs. I did like having the ute with the additional uh, luggage space and being able to carry big loads in the back of that. But the comfort in the back of a dual cab ute's not as great as what it is in a wagon. So, yeah, I, I don't know if I'd buy a dual cab or not. Um, but I've got nothing against them. I, they've definitely got their place. Um, for what I want to do, though, for me day to day, and even me on the weekend, the wagon is much more suited. You know, as you've seen in my videos, I sleep in the back of this thing. I carry everything in the back of it. Um, to me, to do a dual cab setup, uh, especially like with the big hard canopy and things like that, for me that's a waste. It means you carry, end up carrying way too much stuff, which is heavier, a heavier load, starts putting you over your GVM. So for me, a dual cab or even a ute, standard uh, single cab ute, maybe now not the best thing for me. Or single cab, definitely not with the family, but a dual cab, still probably not. Um, could I go back to something like a Falcon Wagon? Yeah, I probably could. Um, but I do like being able to get into those harder to reach places and having that extra ground clearance. So for me personally, the four wheel drive, the Pajero here has turned out to be the best bet. Um, I got this car, <coughs> I got this car after looking at a few others and I have absolutely fallen in love with it. So definitely for me, the Pajero is the best option. But for you, hey, no, who knows? Like the wife's Corolla. She's got a 97 Corolla. Um, it's a sedan, not the wagon. And that does her perfectly. You know, we've got enough room to put our groceries in there for her to run to the shops, doctor's appointments, pick up a couple of friends and run around, things like that. She's got one anchor point for a car seat if she needs it in the back. Um, you know, the Corolla's ideal for her, it's fine. And it's cheap on fuel, zippy little thing to get around town. So, but for me, it'd be no good because I couldn't take all the stuff I want to take when I go camping. I couldn't get to half the places I want to go. So, yeah. When it comes to looking for cars, guys, really stop and take your time to have a look at what you need the car for. Um where you're gonna be taking it, what you're gonna be doing with it. Lucky this bloke done. Take your time to look at what you need it for, where you're going, what you're gonna do with it. And yeah, don't discount brands or makes of cars just because oh, it's not a cool car. You know, it really, really isn't a smart thing to do. Like I, again, yes, I'm biased to Ford. I've always been a Ford fan, but if a Commodore came up the same price, same quality, well then I would have bought a Commodore. It's that simple. I actually offered my grandfather the money for his Commodore when I first got my license. So, yeah. All right, that's enough of me rambling. Um, gonna go find another spot and probably do another video and I'll talk to you later. Cheers, see you on the tracks.